the first round of financing we did was the visa round. Well, what do I mean by the visa round? You know those binders you put baseball cards in? Well, we put credit cards in those. I, I actually have a binder with 20 or 30 credit cards. Joe and I were in so much debt. And by the way, I don't know if you, have you, maybe this is a unique thing to me, maybe it's like my own neurosis, but like, I remember for the first two years we started the company, um, I would wake up in the morning and I would just have this like kind of panic. And maybe it was, maybe this binder was part of that panic, but it was just like, everyone thought it was crazy. No one supported us. We had no money. It was the best weight loss program ever. I probably lost 20 pounds and I have any money for food. And I would wake up in the middle of the morning, like my heart pounding. I was like, how the hell did I get myself in this situation? Like, what am I doing? Like, and over the course of the day, I would, I would convince myself that everything's going to work out. No, 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 I got a plan. It's all good. And by the night, I would like go to bed really confident. I was like, no, no, no. Now things are turning the corner. And I'd go to sleep, and it was like a reset button. All of a sudden, I'm like, oh, and like, it would just jolt me out of bed again. My heart would start pounding again. And it was just like Groundhog Day. It was like every morning. It would be like this. And I don't think this binder really helped. So, you know, we launched for the Democratic National Convention. So we, this is August now, 2008. Almost a year after we had the original idea, we, you know, we built three versions of the website. There's a saying that if you launch and no one notices, just launch again. So we did. We launched three versions of the website. By the third version, it was the Democratic National Convention. All the hotels in Denver sold out. So we had this idea, what if we you know, basically got all these Obama supporters to open up their homes to other Obama supporters? We launched. Um, and I remember the day we launched, we um, had a meeting with a, a well-known um, investor, and the site was down. I didn't bring a slide deck, so that wasn't a super successful pitch. It was mostly just me and him staring at each other for an hour. Um, and they did not invest. At this moment, we had about 20, um, 20 investors had been introduced to Airbnb. And I mean, any of them probably could have owned 10% of the company for $100,000. Because um, I think a million, I was willing to do 1.5 pre-money valuation as like a round of funding. That was like, it just puts things in perspective. Now, just to put it in perspective, that seems like today a good deal. Back then, no, like we were interested in 20 investors. I think like 15 of them didn't even reply to my email. I remember one of them, I was having a, um, I met with him at University Cafe. He ordered a smoothie. In the middle of the conversation, he just kind of gets up and leaves. And... I thought he had to part, like, you know, I thought it was like his, you know, his, uh, I figured, you know, like pretty naturally, like, oh, Joe, don't worry, he'll be back, his uh, car, you know, probably just need to put more money in the meter. And that's the last I've ever seen of him. So I, I don't think he's still trying to figure out where his car is, but that was like four years ago. So um, that was actually not unlike the stories of many of the people that like kind of met with us. So, you know, at this point, we were in debt, and we had to figure out a way to pay our rent. The Democratic National Convention had come. We filled up like about 80 people staying at Airbnb. And then the week after the convention, it was kind of back to zero. And I had this revelation of only there were political conventions every week. We'd have like an amazing business. But now what do we do? We built this website. We were spending a year on it. No one's using it. It was a, ch a chicken and egg problem. No one wanted to come to Airbnb and list their homes because there were no travelers. No travelers wanted to come to a website where there were no homes. And by the way, this was like a social experiment, right? Like, no one wants to be the first person to try an idea like this. You're like, oh, I wonder if this is a good idea. You know, I'll be the guinea pig. No one wanted to be that person to figure out if this was actually a good idea. Most people thought it was insane. And we had no way to get critical mass or network effects. So how do you get a network of critical mass in cities all over the world. We're in 34,000 cities. So one night, September 2008, without any money, Joe and I are, um, this is another kind of weird turn of the story. Joe and I are thinking about how the hell we're going to pay our rent, how we're gonna get ourselves out of this debt, and how we're gonna keep the company going. And we have this idea, we said, at the time we were called air bed and breakfast. So half of our business was basically breakfast if you think about it that way. And um, we're like, it would be great if we could provide breakfast to people going to the Democratic National Convention. And we were thinking, what would a breakfast be, like what kind of breakfast would we provide for them? Well, we're not gonna mail people perishable like eggs in the morning. What if we had like a branded like cereal? Cereal, something we can mail them. And we came up with this idea, and the idea we came up with was Obama O's. Basically Cheerios, we called them Obama O's. The breakfast to change. And we said, well, if we're gonna have an Obama-themed cereal, we have to have a John McCain-themed cereal as well. So we came up with a John McCain themed cereal called Cat McCain's, a maverick in every bite. So we designed these boxes of cereal, and um, 
we had absolutely no money. We figured we can like get General Mills or we can get Kellogg's to actually, you know, we can license it to them. They can sell millions of boxes and we'll make hundreds of thousands of dollars. And that's how we were going to raise money because no one was going to raise money. By the way, this is fall 2008. A wonderful time to raise money for an idea, idea to rent air beds in your living room when you have zero experience and you don't know what TechCrunch is. So we called Kellogg's and General Mills um, and probably not to our surprise, they just did not pick up. And I think they even like called security. We called local cereal companies and they said, great, we're happy to work with you. All we need is a non-refundable deposit for $250,000. Like who's gonna print thousands of boxes of cereal? So Joe and I were just like hustling around. We meet this guy in Berkeley. He's an alumni of the Rhode Island School of Design. He's got a print shop, not a cereal company. And he says, guys, I wanna help you. I can't print you 100,000 boxes of cereal, and I don't even have a cereal company, but I have a printer, and I'll print you 1,000 boxes, basically these die-cut boxes for free. And if you succeed and you sell these, just give me a royalty. Because he said that he wanted to help a fellow Brisbane alumni. And that's when we became what we call cereal entrepreneurs. And um, Joe and I literally were assembling these boxes in our kitchen. I mean, basically, we had 1,000 boxes. It's like poster board. And we're assembling them with hot glue. And by the way, they shouldn't call it hot glue. They should call it like burn glue because it's f***ing hot. <laughs> and I had a perfect one-to-one -one ratio of burn to box. And there were a thousand of these boxes. And I remember like, like we were like gluing all these boxes. We didn't, even have, like, we didn't have any cereal. So we'd go to the grocery store to get cereal, but we didn't even have enough money to buy all the cereal boxes. So we would go every night to buy 50 boxes because that's all the money we had. And we went to like the really cheap grocery store because that's where you get dollar boxes of cereal. And Joe and I, I had to be like a spotter because like he was afraid something would happen to him in this grocery store because it was in a really bad neighborhood. And I remember at some point something like dawned on me because I'm in the middle of the kitchen. I'm assembling cereal boxes. I'm like, I wonder if Mark Zuckerberg was assembling cereal boxes when they first launched Facebook. I don't remember when it would just like took off like him one year later assembling cereal. I wonder if this is a good sign or a bad sign. And I thought to all the other entrepreneurs that were in my predicament of one year later assembling cereal for a technology company, and that's when I kind of worried about our prospects. I remember one day my mom called me, she's like, are you guys a cereal company now? And the scary thing wasn't the question, but what the answer was, because I think technically we were at that point. Anyways, we had this idea, we mailed these boxes of cereal to press, and in a matter of a couple of weeks, um, we had a pretty ingenious idea to how to get it out. We actually ended up selling $30,000 worth of cereal boxes, and that was our first round of financing. So, you know, this is now a year in, no money. We'd sold 30,000 boxes of cereal. We're like back to broke, which is like a great thing for me. And um, then that's when we decided to enter Y Combinator. And I remember meeting with Paul Graham and he, the first question he asked me is, people are doing this, like the Airbnb? And we go, yeah, and he goes, what's wrong with them? <laughs> and that was the beginning of my interview. So I. I could kind of tell, that, and that was like the highlight. It kind of went down from there. He just, he, halfway through the interview, he tried to convince us to like start a bank. And because he just is always trying to convince you to start a different business than when you tell him. And somehow we were going to be the company that starts a bank. I think that became Stripe. Um, but, um, and so, so as we're about to leave. He thinks this is the worst idea ever. And then we hand him a box of Obama O's. And he basically says, if you can convince people to buy a $4 box of cereal for $40, maybe convince them to stay in other people's rooms. And um, so he led us into Y Combinator.